Hanford uranium separation plant in eastern Washington. Uh, uranium, U-235, and plutonium are stored in such a way uh, as to protect the workers. I mean, they're, they're stored in brass cans. It's the material stored in brass cans. It's wrapped in plastic three times. Before it can be handled, uh, workers have to don special protective uh, overalls and they wear breather masks and, and uh, 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 special attention is paid. Before anybody can touch it, they have to use steel gloves. I mean, they take extra precaution, protective overalls, protective glasses, protective masks. And all of these rigid rules grew out of learning the hard way of hard experiences in handling uh, radioactive materials. In fact, for decades, no one knew how dangerous it could be. In fact, the workers who, who first handled radioactive materials uh, had no idea. They were the ones who actually painted uh, the, the glow-in-the-dark numbers on, on some of those old-style watches. And, and, and what their workers would tell them to do is that they were to take their brushes and to, to paint that radioactive material on those numbers. And, and the workers, or, or the, the supervisors even encouraged them to lick their brushes so that they would get a fine tip on the brush so they could, uh, they could mark it really well. Their supervisors told them that it would give them sex appeal if they did that, if they licked their brushes. Of course, what it gave them is cancer. And we know the dangers. We know uh, how dangerous those kinds of materials and, and how we handle them. So we do it with extreme caution right now. We may not have to worry about getting cancer with the things that we're talking about. But the things that come out of our mouth can be just as toxic. In fact, look at what Solomon says in Proverbs about the words that we speak. Words kill Words give life. They're either poison or fruit you choose. We're going to talk today about toxic words in our series we're calling Radioactive. And welcome back. This is week number two in our series. And we've been talking about this thing about this energy of radioactivity that can, uh, has tremendous power. And if we're not careful, it can be a deadly power. If we're, our, if we're exposed in such a way, it can be deadly. And so welcome back to that. Welcome uh, our Coweta campus. Welcome our Sepulpa campus, our online viewers. I'm glad that you're here. Last week, we talked about toxic thoughts. And we talked about this idea that your thoughts determine who you become. The things that you allow in your mind, the things that you replay in your mind, the thoughts that you have are determining who you will become. And so we talked about giving special attention to that and making sure that we take captive those thoughts and make them obedient to Christ. And we switch them out. We replace it with spiritual, with spiritual truth. We replace the destructive thoughts with spiritual truth. Your thoughts matter so much because we talked about how your thoughts influence your words and your words influence your actions. Your actions speak of your habits and determine your habits and your habits determine your character and your destiny and your future. And so thoughts and words are important. In fact, the Bible links them together for us this way. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. In other words, your thought life and what you allow in your heart, the things that you think about, the things that are on the inside, ultimately are going to come out on the heart. You cannot trick your mouth. You cannot... You cannot uh, change this. This is just happens. Your mouth is going to speak the things that are in your heart and in your mind. Your m thoughts matter and your words matter. In fact, your words are powerful. Maybe you've heard about the sinner's Bible. Sometimes it's called the wicked Bible. If you've not heard about it, it was printed in 1631. It was shortly after the King James Version was printed. And in fact, it was intended to be kind of a reprint of that. It was in the early days uh, of, of English translations of the Bible. And so uh, the printer's intention was to just do a reprint of the King James Version. The problem was 
when they got to Exodus 20 and all these Bibles were print, or have been printed and they're in the seventh commanded commandment, one little word was left out. Instead of saying, thou shalt not commit adultery, the word not was left out. Thou shalt commit adultery. And these Bibles were printed and distributed. And, and when it was found out about it, the king fined the, the printers 300 pounds, which was an astronomical number in those days, revoked their printing license. And, and all the Bibles that could be found were, were, were piled up and, and burned and destroyed. In fact, there's only just a handful of them left today. You can hardly, uh, hardly find them except in rare occasions in, in museums. But it reminds us that just one little word makes all the difference in the world. Our words are powerful. The power of a single word, it can change everything. In fact, when God created the world, he did it through the spoken word. There's nothing. And God says, let there be light. It was God's word that spoke everything into existence. And our words have tremendous power. Our words can do constructive, creative things, our words can also be toxic. In fact, by show of hands, how many of you would say sometimes your words get you into trouble? Yeah? And, and, and how many of you would say there are things that I've said that I wish I could take back? Yeah. We all understand those toxic words. We know there is power in our words, that they bring life or death. They can kill or they can bring life. In fact, some of you struggle still now as adults because of words that were said to you as a child. Maybe it wasn't intentional. Maybe somebody didn't really mean it this way. Maybe it was just one time. But things that were told to you as a child have, 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 have made a negative difference uh, in your life. You'll never amount to anything. You're just like your father. You'll never grow up. You'll never get it right. On the other hand, there are many of you that that grew up in loving homes where there were words of blessing that were spoken, and you grew up with that, and you grew up where there was encouragement, and, and words spoke life into you, and it has made you the person that you are, and it's made you successful in life. That's what words do. They change the course of of event. They change our life. They change our relationships. In fact, I see it all the time when I'm talking with people. I can see in a marriage relationship whether there are words of life that are being spoken in that relationship or whether there are toxic words that are being spoken, poisonous words. I can tell it when I walk into a work environment. I can tell by the environment if there are words of life that are spoken in that work environment or if there are toxic words that are spoken in that environment. I can tell it when I walk into a church. I can tell it when I walk into a small group. I can tell it when I walk into a, 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 a friend's house. I can tell it when I walk into with neighbors and begin to talk about them, talk to them. I can tell whether there are words of, of life or words of 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 death that are being spoken. I can tell it with children, whether they're growing up in an environment where parents are speaking life into their world or whether they're speaking toxic words into their children's lives. Our words are powerful. And our words have the power to be able to change lives. In fact, I'm going to say it this way. This will be kind of be our theme for today. Your life is moving in the direction of the words you are speaking. Let that sink in for just a little bit. Your life, your life is moving in the direction of the words that you're using, the words that you are speaking currently right now. The things that you're saying, the words that you're using, the phrases, the sentences, the thoughts that are coming out verbally in your life, they are determining your future. They are determining who you are. They are determining where you're going. Your life is moving in the direction of the words that you're using. In fact, that's told multiple times in Scripture. Solomon talks about it. But I want you to listen to what James, the brother of Jesus, says about our words. Probably the most extensive section of Scripture that talks about what we say. 
James 3, 2 says, we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. Now, you're asking, what does that have to do with our tongues? What does that have to do with what we say, with our words? Well, actually, this was an old proverb, and it has very much to say with what has very much to do with what we say. In fact, the next few words are going to be all about that. In fact, what James is saying right here is if you can keep your tongue in check, if you can keep your words in check, you can keep everything in check. You can keep your body in check. If you can control the tongue, you can control the whole. And what James is going to say, he is going to acknowledge that it is very difficult. It is hard. But your words steer the course of your life. Your words steer the course of your life. And if you can keep your tongue in check, that's what he's talking about. If you can keep your words in check right here, you can keep your whole body in check. Listen to what he says in verse 3. We put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us. We can turn the whole animal by that one little bit. So he's given us an illustration of exactly what he just said. We can control the whole of, an, of a large animal by this one little thing that we put in our mouth. Some of you have ridden horses, and you know the importance of that. You can control this animal. You can steer this animal. This animal will go wherever you tell it most of the time because of that small little bit. He gives a second illustration. Or take ships as an example. Although they're so large, they're driven by strong winds, but they're steered by a very small rudder. Wherever the pilot wants to go, that one little part. If we can control the rudder, we can control the direction of that ship. If we can control the bit and the bridle, we can control the direction that the horse is going to go. He says, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. The tongue is just this little bitty part of our body. It's hidden most of the time, but it can do amazing things. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. He gives a third example. Just a little bitty spark starts an entire fire. In fact, he says the tongue is a fire. It's a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body. It sets the course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. James is just saying, make sure you understand how toxic the tongue can be, how important your words can be, and how influential what you say can be on your life and on other people's lives. And then he winds up by saying this, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, sea creatures, they're being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. We've got all kinds of animals in the zoo. We've got all kinds of people at SeaWorld that tame animals to do certain things. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. It's toxic. That's just the nature of, 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 of our mouth and uh, the tongue and our lips and the words that we speak. They have the, the power to be extremely toxic and poisonous and they can do tremendous danger to people. And James is acknowledging it is so hard to tame the tongue. In fact, he's saying it can't be done. You can't do it. We probably can't do it on our own. And so because of that, the Bible tells us that we've got to be very careful. Because of that, be careful. Give careful thought to your words before you speak. Give careful thought to your words before you speak. Be cautious with the things that you're saying. It is so important because the tongue is, has so much negative potential that as Christians, we've got to give careful thought to the words that we are about to speak before we speak them. We understand that we recognize that as Christians. In fact, Proverbs tells us this, the words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. It's the same tongue, it's the same mouth. What's the difference? It's that somebody chose their words carefully. And reckless people, people that were not cautious, their words pierce like swords. They cause pain, they cause hurt, they cause death. But the words of the wise, they, they bring forth healing. They're helpful, they bring life. 
In fact, your mom was right when she told you, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. What she was telling you was, before you speak your words, think through the ramifications, think through the consequences of what your words are going to involve. Now, honestly, sometimes it's unintentional. It means doesn't mean that we're not careful, but that sometimes we just do it unintentionally. You know, I was a youth minister here at Cedar Ridge for 10 years before I became a preaching minister. And I had people all the time with good intentions, good motivations would come up to me and say, so, like, when are you going to be a real preacher? Like, what I was doing right then didn't amount to anything. And I had lots of words for them to say, typically in those situations. It was unintentional. Or sometimes it happens for people who are single. And somebody will just simply say, well, when are you going to get married? How come you're not married yet? And unintentionally, we're starting conversations, but sometimes those are reckless words that hurt, that hurt people. Or maybe to a young couple, maybe even struggling to have children. And someone just recklessly says, so when are you going to have children? Or maybe worse yet, talking to someone that appears to be pregnant, how far along are you? And she's not pregnant. And so that, yeah, reckless words. Sometimes they're unintentional. Sometimes they are intentional. You know, quite honestly, sometimes people are just mean with their words. They are trying to cause hurt. They are trying to inflict some pain. They're trying to make them feel better by making somebody else feel worse. Sometimes we're just hateful with our words. And what I found is that a lot of times for Christian people, for church people, we try to justify it. We try to say things that justify the things that we say like this. Well, that's just who I am. I, I, I'm just a loud mouth. I say what I feel. I'm just an open book. You can't hide it from me. The truth hurts. I'm just saying the truth. And so we come up with all kinds of reasons why we think we have a right to be able to say the things that we do. And we excuse and we rationalize the things that we're saying to other people. And those words hurt. They pierce like swords. We need to be cautious. We need to be cautious of the words. Give careful attention to the things that we're saying. On the other hand, you have probably heard words of blessing. You've probably been blessed by words of healing like that come from the tongue of the wise. Like, I love you. I'm thankful for you. I would marry you all over again. I'm proud of you as my son. I'm proud of you as my daughter. You choose your words. They can kill or they can bring life. They're poison or they are fruit. Give careful attention to your words. But the Bible even goes beyond that. The Bible goes on and I think makes this point. Shut your mouth when tempted to speak toxic words. We need to give careful attention to the things that are about to come out of our mouth, but especially the things that should not come out of our mouth. It's time to shut it. It's time to zip it. It's time to button it up. It's time to just not say anything. If you're tempted to say some toxic words, then just shut your mouth. In fact, listen to what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Shut it. Don't let anything unclean, impure, unwholesome come out of your mouth, but only what's helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And so maybe the, the, the rule of thumb is, it, it, are the things that are coming out of my mouth, are they going to be beneficial? Are they going to be helpful? Do they give future? Do they give life or do they give death? Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. That means things that are critical of people. That means things that are, that are hurtful, intentionally hurtful of people. I shut my mouth when I'm tempted to talk about those kinds of things. In fact, back in the book of James, 
James is even a little stronger about that. He says, those who consider themselves religious but don't keep a tight rein on their tongue, they deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. In other words, if you can't keep your mouth shut, if you're a churchgoer, if you're a Christ follower and you can't seem to keep your mouth shut, then your religion is a sham. Then you're not really a Christian. That's what James would say. You're not a Christ follower if you're continuing to let things like that come out of your mouth because out of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if your mouth is speaking that kind of stuff, then your heart has not been changed by Jesus. Shut your mouth when tempted to speak toxic words. It's true when we're speaking to other people. And quite honestly, for some of you, it's more important when you're speaking to yourself. The words that you're speaking to yourself, and you just need to stop it. You would never say that kind of thing to anybody else. Don't say it to yourself. Those toxic words are just as hurtful and painful for you, and so shut your mouth. In fact, this is what I want you to do. I want you to do a little exercise with me this week. Ho hopefully you got one of these bracelets last week. If you didn't, uh, make sure you get one. We'll kind of go back over what we did last week, but this is what I want you to do. You find yourself saying something toxic to another person or find yourself speaking toxic words to yourself, I want you to inflict a little pain, pain on yourself. Okay, you have my permission to inflict a little pain on yourself or to those that give you permission. Maybe in your family, you can make that fun little game. You're not going to do it uh, where you're going to harm anybody. You're not going to do it where uh, you, they, you're not going to do it when you don't have permission to do it. But maybe as a family or maybe as friends, you're you kind of work through this. Maybe you're a small group. Something comes out of your mouth. And I want you just as a reminder to say that is unwholesome. That shouldn't come out of a Christian's mouth. And you replace it with the truth. You speak pure words. You speak words that are encouraging. You speak blessing to people. In fact, can you imagine the change that if just all the Christians in the world would say, we're not going to speak those kinds of things. We're not going to let those kinds of things come out of our mouth. Can you imagine the change in conversations? the change in relationships, the change in attitudes. If every Christian in our community and every Christian in our nation and every Christian in the world just said, we're going to not let those kinds of things come out of our mouth. We're not going to allow toxic words to come out of our mouth. We're only going to speak things that are going to build up and encourage well, we need to talk about one more thing before we wrap it up, and that is to tell yourself the truth when toxic words are spoken to you. Because ultimately, somebody is going to share something, say something, speak something toxic to you. And how do we handle that? How do we deal with that? Really, that's kind of what we talked about, our thought life last week. Words that you hear have the capacity to change you and to influence you. And so what we've got to do is to guard our hearts from internalizing those kinds of things. In fact, that's what the Bible tells us. It says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And so when we, when we are the recipients of toxic words, what we have to do is we have to guard that. We, we can't let every word come into us. And as mature Christians, we can't... We can't change, we can't control what other people are doing. We can't control what they say about us, but we can control what we believe about it. We can control what we believe about ourselves. And so what we have to do is we have to switch our thinking. And when those words come in and someone says, you're worthless, you're pathetic, you're no good, we hear those words, but we also go back to what we learned last week, and we take captive those destructive thoughts, and we replace them with the truth. We replace them with what God says. We switch it. In fact, that was the exercise that we did last week, if you missed it. We talked about just physically switching the bracelet on our wrist to represent the switch that's taking place in our brain. This is the destructive thought that I'm hearing or I have, have believed about myself. 
and I am switching it with something else. I am taking captive the destructive thought, and I'm replacing that destructive thought with spiritual truth. Of course, that means I've got to know what that spiritual truth is. I may have to read more of my Bible. I may have to memorize more of my Bible. I may have to internalize more of what God tells me about myself so I have something to replace it with because it is so important. Your thoughts determine who you are becoming. Your thoughts have an influence on your words. And your life is moving in the direction of the words that you are speaking. And so we've got to be careful. We've got to give careful attention to the words that we are using because they are determining the course of our life. And so before they come out of our mouth, we we, we speak those words with caution. And we, we recognize toxic words are coming out. We stop it and, and, and we shut our mouth and we don't let those words come out. You know, we recognize now how destructive the potential hurt and the potential negative effect in, in, on the environment and on people that radioactive materials can be. We understand that now more than we did decades ago and in fact we understand it to the point now that every once in a while you'll hear about a town in some faraway place that hears about radioactive materials are going to be transported by rail through their town or maybe just outside their town some large company is wanting to to store those or the federal government is wanting to create a storage facility for those uh, radioactive materials and the people come together and they go not in our town not in our state not in our part of the country and we understand the the, the concern that they have because they know the dangers and they know the negative uh, ramifications of that. But what if we got that excited and that interested in saying about our toxic words, not out of my mouth, not from this body, not from this person who is representing Jesus Christ. I will not let those things come from me. I will not negatively influence somebody. I will not let that unwholesome talk come out of my mouth, but only what is encouraging and will build others up. Father, thank you for, for changing our hearts. And God, I am praying that our thoughts and our minds would represent that. God, help us as, as we, we understand your word and the significance of just what one small word can do that we would understand the gravity of that god help us to be cautious with the things that we say help us to be careful with our words and to use them cautiously and god when it comes to toxic words and our temptation help us just to close our mouth and only things that are helpful and wholesome encouraging and useful for building up things that are good will come out. Help us in Jesus' name.